Suffering comes to us in so many forms, in so many ways. Do you know why? Because we have many, many, many lives. It is said in the Lamrim Kiri, if we were to pile up all the bodies we've taken in our previous lives, all the bodies, next life, next life, all the previous lives we've had, if we pile it up, it would be higher than Mount Palash, Mount Meru. Actually, if I want to tell you, Mount Meru is the center of the universe in the Buddhist cosmology, which is a huge mountain, bigger than Mount Palash. But let's say Mount Palash and Mount Everest just to be simple. Our bodies would be bigger than Mount Palash. That's how many bodies we've taken. So each one of those, just in this life alone, how many not so good things have we done? This life alone, how many not nice things we've done in hurting people? Purposely and not purposely because of lack of responsibility. How many, how many times we've hurt people that love us, disappoint people? Again and again, and we're so callous and we're so cold and we're so hard and we're so conniving and calculative to hurt people we like again and again with our irresponsibility and have the face to act like nothing and, and still get depressed, have the nerve and audacity to be depressed after they depress so many people, disappoint so many people and the people that love them, yet they have the nerve to be depressed and unhappy and want consolation still and walk around with a black face and tell people I'm, I'm not happy with myself and then use depression as another cover. Boy, have I seen that so many times. They hurt people. They disappoint people, they lie, they break their promise, they forget, and then they're depressed because they were irresponsible. And you see, but I'm the victim. I am the victim. I always tell people that I'm the victim here. You forgot, not me. Why are you depressed that you stood me up? Why is it we're supposed to meet at, at uh, 12 and you show up at 3? And then you're depressed because you're late because you're depressed with yourself. I'm still like that. I look at them and say, oh my God, when can I be the victim and heal? Do you meet people like that who consistently tell you they're wrong, they're sorry, they did it again for the 100th time, and then they're depressed, they're unhappy, they mope around, they have a black face, and they slouch, and then they, their, lips, their lips and their face and their eyes all like, oh, they're all drooping, and they actually take the attention away from the victim, and they bring it to themselves, and you're like, huh? But I'm the victim. I would love to make a t-shirt. I am the victim, not you. You ever meet people like that? They do that to you consistently over and over. Hurt you, lie to you, disappoint you, sneaky, not do their responsibilities, take advantage of your compassion and kindness and generosity. And then when they fail, they admit it and they're depressed because they failed. And you go, huh? Why are you depressed? And then sometimes they even drop a tear to add it to the Betty, Dr Betty Davis drama, uh, you know, school here. They even add a tear. They, <laughs> I hurt you again. I'm sorry. And you're like, oh, poor thing. Come here. And then you wait, what? Haven't you seen that? They lie to you. They disappoint you. And they drop a tear. And they cry. Or they run into the woods and they, they run away from everybody. We've got to look for them. They're still, they, because they're so angry with themselves, they run away. And then we got to go look for them again. And you're like, huh? Your non-dharma mind says, bye. Maybe you throw them a sausage or a flashlight. See you later, next slide. But your dharma mind says, oh God, we got to look for the creep in the woods. So you go to the woods and look for them because they disappointed you. They hurt you, but they're angry at themselves, and therefore they have to run away. Oh my God, I tell you. I can tell you all this if I've if I not experienced it very clearly many times with many people. That's why I'm able to express it to all of you clearly, not because I'm a reincarnation of a big saint in Tibet. Trust me. It's not because of that, and it isn't that. It is because I've experienced it millions of times with many people throughout my life, and I had the Dharma to apply and say, wait a minute, I'm the victim. But I'm not allowed to say it, of course, because I'm the guru. I've got to be stoic and compassionate and accepting. I can't fight back. They can fight back. They can say nasty things about me, tell their friends, take people to go away, throw things at me, blow up my house, but I can't. I've got to be in the middle of it and take it because I'm the Dharma teacher and I have to be perfect. That's why I say write a book, how Dharma teachers should act. Compose it and write your name to it and 
Let's, let's, you know, meet the chat meeting publications now. In today's cruel world, the teacher is not allowed to make any mistakes. The teacher is not allowed to be unenlightened and not perfect. It has to be perfect. It has to be a Buddha. I'm sorry, I'm not. I'm not a Buddha. I'm not perfect. I'm not. But in today's world, if you dare to teach Dharma, you have to be perfect. And not just perfect to one person, to every single person. So if you have 100, 200, 300 students, you're in trouble. Because to each person, perfection is different. See, to this person, you can be straightforward, tell them all they like. If you like, eh, 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 they don't like. To this person, you're like, eh, 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 you're straight up, they don't like. Each person, you gotta be perfect for them. You gotta be perfect for them. For the people intelligent, not so bright, you gotta talk very slow and teach them fundamental dharma for the next 30 years. For the people very bright, they sit there, oh God, is that all the guru knows? Nothing else, that's it. Everybody like that. And then, and then when the, when the, eh, eh, this is the big one. If the teacher dare scold a student and on their bad day, that's it. They go to immigration report you. They call the police and get you. They tell all your students you're evil. They'll talk to your sponsors and cut off your sponsorship. They won't pick up your phone. When your students call them, they won't respond on the telephone. They ignore you. They threaten you. They're going to leave. They're going to run. They're going to get you. They're going to hate you. And they do everything. Everything. If you dare scold them. But you know what? I say, oh, forget it. Rip on me, la. Get rid of me, la. I don't care. Do whatever you want. But if I'm going to be a real teacher, I'm going to be honest. And I'm going to tell my students and friends honestly. Why? Why prance around the tree for the rest of my life? If the student runs to the woods, I have to chase them, isn't it? You know, I've been into the woods so much, I've turned into a gorilla. I don't, I'm not even a human anymore. I'm always in the woods looking for someone. That's a story of my life, always looking for someone. Some people just won't come out of the forest. They sit there, uh-uh, I'm not coming out, uh-uh. You're like, oh God, please come out. Here's some food, here's some money, I'll give you a house. Please come out of the forest, please. They're like, mm, no, no, I'm staying in the forest. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, what do you do? And then, you know, that's the funniest part. The funniest part is people, people who actually do the things consistently over and over wrong, and then when you, when you tell them off, they're depressed. Incredible, the ego trip, that mind, incredible. You think about that. So if you take refuge in the Dharma, instantly your anger becomes less. I'll tell you why. Because you accept karma and you take responsibility. Instantly your awareness grows. Instantly, why does your awareness grow? Because you say, no, that's not me. I can become better. And you push yourself to become better because you believe in Dharma. Why? Because karma is impermanent. Good karma can end, and bad karma can end. Therefore, our good things can end, therefore don't have ego and pride. Oh, I'm young, I'm strong, I can do this, I can do that, I'm beautiful. Oh, you can give it up, because why that will end? Then how? Why do you think actresses, beautiful actresses and actors suffer so much when they age? Because they base their life on that beauty. They suffer tremendously, they're putting suicide. And then, if you have bad things, I'm sleepy, I'm unalert, I can't learn, I'm angry, then if you believe in karma, you also you'll be happy. Why? Because negative karma that those things come from can end if we apply the antidote. So if we apply dharma, practices, retreats, and uh, uh, practices, recitations, meditations, if we apply the dharma, then the results of the negative karma will go away. Why? Because the negative karma is pure karma. All can change if we take refuge in Dharma. All can change. But if we take refuge in the Dharma and we believe we don't do anything, then nothing changes. When nothing changes, we're angry and we're upset. We can fool one or two people, but eventually, wherever we go, whatever we do, we cannot fool. Why? Even people without Dharma can see through us. I give you an example. We can see people when they're bullshitting us and lying to us. How come they can't see us? We're smart. We know when people are lying. How come, we don't, how come they don't know when we're lying? You ever think about that? I know many people in my group are very sensitive. When I ask them this and this, they can give me clear, precise feelings about that person. And they're accurate. Because 
I know those people for you know a long, long time. So why is it that they can see, but they don't see themselves? Of course they see themselves, of course. But they use that as a lame excuse not to improve. Why? They're used to using you emotionally, physically, your generosity, your, your kindness. They're used to it, and they suck, and they parasite you. Why? They're not happy doing it. Really, they're not. Do we believe people are happy doing bad things? No. Because they have not accepted responsibility based on karma. And they accept that. Their parasitical ways will disappear very fast. You know why? Why would anybody, anybody who suck off of other people and use other people, their reason is they want immediate benefit. And they want benefit long term and more likely immediate. But if they know that by the power of karma, negative people rise, they will stop. Why? Parasites and people who use other people are more scared. Why? Because they want the easy way. But in fact, if they know that they're not creating the easy way, it's in fact the more ugly way and the more detrimental way, short and long term, they will stop. People who use people want the easy way. So they know that's not the easy way, that really it's the bad way and it's the way that makes it more difficult. They will stop. Why? That will be based on taking refuge in. Come. Simple. We don't need to talk about Tantra and Bajra. We don't need to talk about secret protectors. We don't need to talk about anything. We don't need to talk about Dalai Lama. We don't need to talk about Buddha or enlightened beings like, you know, um, sovereignty. We don't need to. We just talk about karma. Isn't it deep? And you see the benefits if we believe in karma? And karma is real. You may be blind as a bat, but it doesn't mean everybody else in the world doesn't see light. It doesn't mean everybody else is ignorant. So think about that. Everything I explain to all of you, I explain to you logically, and I give you negative, pro and con. And I make you think, why? That's the Dharma's basis. So if you want to fight it out, you want to debate it out, no problem. I'm not afraid to do Let's debate. If you want to debate with people who don't know anything, of course you win, they don't know anything. You don't really win, you lose, because you're debating with someone not your equal. If you run away and you don't want to debate with yourself, you lose again, why? When you're running away for a little while, you're okay. Later, everything will catch up to you again. Why? Everything in our life has caught up with us already. Whatever things we've done, it's already caught us, caught up with us. Why won't it catch up with us more? And as we do it more and more, Yapumba means in Tibetan, it becomes a heap, a pile, it becomes bigger. So when, the, when it's very big, from a very long distance, you can see it already. But when it's small, from a long distance, you cannot. Like that, when we keep doing negative things, irresponsible, and we hate, and we have anger, it becomes more and more and more. And then, from all direction, everybody can see you. Then where to run? Like a big mountain. Think about it. So you want to have anger? Enjoy yourself while you can. Because when your anger results pile up like Mount Meru, everybody can see it, there's no way to hide. You can't even be angry at yourself. People say, fine. That time you go to the woods, they say, see you later. All the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas can do is maybe throw you a flashlight. They can't even help you. Anger so much like a mountain. How to move a mountain? Think. Very clear, very concise. But just on the basis of refuge. Just on the basis of accepting the Holy Dharma. Just on the basis of taking refuge in the Dharma. And that is based on responsibility, based on acceptance of Lord Buddha's Fundamental noble truth, four noble truths. Fundamental cessation of suffering, knowing its cause, applying its end good. Karma. The fundamental, the first teaching Buddha gave in Varanasi. Forget about that. Don't, don't, don't talk about he manifests Kala Chakra and Dhani Kosha, don't and Shambhala. He's really manifesting as Hiruka here and there. All that you don't believe, it's okay. But believe what Buddha said. All the schools of Buddhism, everywhere. Accept that. Karma. All schools of Buddhism, anywhere in the world, accept karma. They don't accept Vajrayini. Some do, some don't, but they accept karma. So they accept, why don't you accept? No need to talk about all the, the big, big stuff. We all like big stuff and secret stuff. You know what's the secret stuff? Why we're not successful with our emotions. That's the real secret. So we conquer that. That's the most secret practice. Most secret, most holy. I'm not dramatizing it. You think about it. 
You think about how much your anger has caused you unhappiness yourself and others. You think about it. And I am guilty of that. I am guilty of anger and creating unhappiness for myself many, many times. And therefore, I stress these teachings because I've taken these teachings and applied it to myself. And I've gotten results. Very much. It works. It does work if you're serious. And if you're irresponsible, you hurt people without wanting to. And without knowing it, not directly. You apply these teachings and it works also. Because I've been guilty of that. Not very much, but I've been guilty of that. And it works. Accepting harm. So when we have so many sufferings and problems, why? Because they arise from our negative karma from many lifetimes. Many, 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 many lifetimes we have created negative karma. And so the results must come. This is one life. Even when we do positive actions in this life, we do our little black tea, help, help, help. We've got 500,000 lifetimes of negative karma that that little black tea has to, you know, you throw water at that. It's so small. People make a little, and some more, a lot of people make small little black teas with little chip plastic cups, dirty, cheap little Lipton bag, very quick and very fast. And we put it in front of our Dharma protectors, like example, etc. Please save me from everything. Give me business. Give me a lover. Give me a friend. Let me have no obstacles, no problems at all. And we even say this like testing him will he do something or not. Yeah, we'll definitely do like that. What do you expect him to do? If he can help you, let me tell you, it is a miracle. And he does create miracles. But most of us, we offer a cheap little back of tea. We want everything back. Some of us don't even believe in black tea. Oh, forget it. They're just lying. The Tibetan lamas are lying. They're all liars. The Dalai Lama's a liar. Trinidad is a liar. Papa Guru is a liar. They're all liars. The deities don't exist. The Buddhas don't exist. The protectors don't exist. The rituals are stupid. Why should I do it? Why should I do any black tea? They're stupid. I'm smart. Every single high lama in Tibet for the last thousand years are liars. They're just fooling us. Why? When I do black tea, there's no effect. Some of us don't. I tell them, please do black tea every day. Please do this ritual. Do this puja. Do this mantra. Please do. It will help you avoid a lot of things. They don't. They don't. And I ask them. And at least they're honest. No, I didn't do it. And I think to myself, definitely you don't believe. Why? Because all the lamas are liars. The biggest liar in the world is the Dalai Lama. The second biggest liar in the world is his homeless pantry Ji. The next one, Trijan Ji, Ling Ji, is gurus. They're big liars. Of course they're liars. Why would they teach us to pray and take refuge and take refuge in Dharma? Why would they teach us to be patient and forgive and love? Why would they teach us to do that stupid black tea? Some more, they're so greedy. Tea not enough, I have to buy milk. I know. So expensive. And some more, plastic cup cannot. Must be silver. I'm not going to pay for silver. I'd rather go to a club, have fun, spend it on my boyfriend, my girlfriend, my lover, my friend, my dog. I can spend it on everything, charge it all up. But I don't have money for anything for the protector. Why? Because I don't believe it. The lamas are liars. They're all liars. So when you go against your guru, he's a liar, and all the lineage lamas are liars. And then indirectly, I'm so sorry, the Buddha's a liar. Because the knowledge comes from Buddha. So when you fight against your guru, you fight against Buddha. Why? What is a guru teaching you think? Buddha Dharma or Devil Dharma? You think Hantu Dharma or Buddha Dharma? If he's teaching you Hantu Dharma, no problem. If he's teaching you Buddha Dharma, then you also is fighting against the Buddha. Then in front of your altar, you pray Buddha, 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 and your guru, you matching. Power match here. Wonderful! The, the Tibetan lamas are all liars. And the biggest liar out of Tibet, the biggest one, a sheep, a wolf in sheep's clothing, of course, is His Eminence Tenerogy. The biggest liar from Tibet. In fact, when I was born, they immediately said Liar Rinpoche. They recognized me immediately. I got the title, title Liar Tupu. For the rest, for the, every day that he lives, that this Rinpoche lives, he's going to be lying to all his students. Why? Take refuge and benefits. You lie. Karma, lie. Forgiveness, lie. Patience, lie. Buddha, lie. Buddha was a gigolo. He lied. Buddha's not a monk. He was a gigolo. I'm telling you the truth now. Buddha was a gigolo. He slept with 100 million Indian women got a lot of money, and that's why he didn't live and relax in the forest. That forest was different. The Sangha, they are all sadomasochists. They love going to the village and begging food from people and using them, although they didn't have any money, they're poor, they're sadomasochists. And the Dharma, I know, is a bunch of things written on paper because you know what? It's more exciting when you're taking a crap and you can read this stuff and then wipe your ass and throw it out. That's why. 
Don't we like to read when we're in the toilet? That's what dharma is for. We read it while we're taking a shit, and then we wipe our butt and throw it out. How nice, the whole use. That's what the dharma is for. That's what we do to it. Lama's a liar, Buddha's a gigolo, the sangha are sadomasochists, dharma is just toilet paper, the dharma protectors, they just, they, they gotta go for anger management, hello, you ever see a dharma protector who's nice? They're all angry, they're all red, they got three eyes, they're burning, they got fangs, go for anger management, etc. And why should I do that? Damn black tea. Why? The Tibetan mamas are liars. They lie. They're stupid. And they're extortionists. Oh, I've been called that before too. He's an extortionist. Who did he, who did he lie to this time to get his donations? Who did he bribe? I've been accused of that. A lot of people. But I'm good at it. You're not. That's why I'm all right. That's it. You want to believe that? Or the opposite? Up to you. But if you go against, if you fight, especially after refuge, then it is equal to saying that. Equal. You think about it. You don't need to say it. Your actions show. When you fight against your guru, your guru is a liar. He's wrong. And his lineage is wrong. His guru is wrong. His guru is wrong. Up to the Buddha. Wrong. When you don't want to follow his dharma, dharma is wrong. 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 No need to practice. Don't, don't have, throw all your statues out. Put your statues in a box. Sell it, make more money, open up another one. Open up uh, my ego mystical treasures and sell your statues. Sell it, make more money selling. Why keep on your altar and put black tea to a bunch of things you don't believe? You believe practice the Dharma. Why build more centers and temples? Why? What for? More, more, more upkeep, more problems, more difficulties. Why? No point. You don't want to be responsible for them. If you want the teacher, you know, acting like a French maid, why open up more things? Think. So we have all these sufferings, we have all these problems. We have so many. They come from our karma. And the sufferings manifest in many ways. They manifest in an emotional manner in our mind to disrupt our mind, to disrupt our unhappiness, to disrupt our happiness. Did something good we have, they want to destroy. We have a good, we have a good life, it makes us feel we don't have good luck. We have a good wife, it makes us feel our wife is bad. We have a good husband, our husband is bad. We have a good family, good wonderful parents, we don't realize it, we use them, or we don't think they're good. We have a great guru, not a liar, of course, and we think he's a liar. There are people running around the world thinking Dalai is bad. Oh my God. They, there are people running around well thinking Mother Teresa's bad. I've heard it. Mother Teresa's a crook. I said, huh? It's like, well, I mean, whatever, you know, whatever. I, mean, I, I, I just look at this and say, you want to go for the coffee? This is changing. I thought I want to hear their view. I thought, how interesting. Because they can change my mind. They can talk all they want. I base mine on logic. They base theirs on prejudice. So maybe I'm prejudiced by saying that, but I don't care. I, rather, I like my prejudice better. 